thank you all for being here. And thank you for this invitation to speak about the dignity of life, the heart of human rights and peace building. I find this invitation very intriguing because in many ways linking life and dignity is an invitation and not only a obvious, established, already given condition. So I would like to explore the theme by presenting dignity and elaborating on the idea of dignity, not only as an ontological dimension of the human person, something that no one can take away, but something actually much more fragile, much more like life itself. You could kill me in no time. I could kill you in no time. Probably I would have a little bit more difficulty because you have many <laughs> and I'm alone. But if I'm clever enough, and I, if I am studious enough, if I'm disciplined enough, I could kill many of you with the right tools. Human life is very fragile. It can be taken away with very little. A room a little too hot make us dead. A little too cold make us dead. Our bodies are not that strong. And if we do not eat enough, and if we do not drink enough, we are gone. There is a fragility to human life. And it may very well be that I am approaching the issue this way because my mother just passed away two weeks ago. But there is a very intense, strong presence in human life that speaks to us and through us from generation prior, that almost miraculously come to us in a way that we don't know and very often are not aware of. And yet, through the encounters of one after the other, the dignity of being who we are is not only reaffirmed, but almost constructed by others. The life that we experience is that our own life is much more than just our biological ones. We are much more than our bodies. And yet, our bodies contain everything that we have or what we are. And the fragility of our bodies calls us into the awareness that we need to take care of ourselves and our life very carefully. This is why I like to think of human rights as a universal warning that we are all caring to one another saying, be careful, handle with care. If you don't, this beautiful, living, breathing organism is gone. It takes very little to take a human life away. And dignity is the invitation to others to make our life fulfilled. So I would like to present the idea that it is in a way an invitation to our shared humanity. That dignity is the awareness that we are not just humans because I am human, because I am who I am, but that my being cannot be conceived without my mother, without my father, without any of you, without any other human that ever been and ever will be. Because guess what? Especially now with the internet. A hundred years from today, somebody can listen to this lecture and say, oh, what a stupid idea he was presenting. What a wonderful things the audience said. What a wonderful experience that was. And how can you do that? How can you say that? Well, I was looking at my brother's and my sister's face. 
they spoke to me. A hundred years ago, a hundred years from now, people look, looking at the video of this encounter will read us the same way we read each other all the time. We'll make sense of the moment in the way in which they, as subject, freely constituted, will be able to do, in a way, reconstituting us once again, 100 years later. Think of how many discoveries in archaeology or history bring about life that was way past, and yet back again. So what I want to say is that dignity is there, given to us at the beginning of our life. And yet from the beginning of our life, exactly as our life, is subject to violence, to neglect, to this marking of others that intrude into our own life and take it away. But at the same time, this dignity is offered to others so that lovingly it can be restored. Think of the many victims that after going through this horrible, terrible moment in which dignity is taken away, find themselves solace and consolation in the attentive and caring presence of somebody who says, what you went through is important to me. What you went through is important to all. What you went through speaks to all of us. So I would like to present dignity not just as something that is already made and we just need to defend, but a little bit of a project that we need responsibly to carry on on behalf of every human being that ever was and ever will be. To care for the dignity of everyone is not just important for those who are cared for, it's important for those who are caring, and it's important for anyone that will come after those because everyone will have to make the choice if they were on the side of those violating the dignity or on the side of those whose dignity was violated and needed to be comforted, needed to be consoled, needed to be welcomed so that dignity could be restored. Something wrong is wrong no matter when it happened. Something wrong can be the beginning of something extremely good when it is recognized as such. So I would like to say that dignity is a call to be human as a, as a fundamental reminder of what it means to be human. It is an invitation to be human together beyond the illusion of enmities. As life, dignity is a gift that we receive and a project that we must responsibly accomplish. As humans, we can refuse to recognize the dignity that is present in others. We can easily do that when we consider people as objects, as things, as tools, deprived of their capacity to exist, to be present, to respond to us freely. We indeed deprive them of their dignities, making them a victim as someone that cannot be listened to, that cannot be recognized in his presence, in her presence, in his free and beautiful existence. If we accept this first step, we can move in the direction of asking ourselves, what happened when human dignity is not recognized? Where is the dignity going? The person that is refusing to recognize the dignity of another is first of all depriving himself and herself of the fullness of his own humanity. Dignity is not just something that is over there. Dignity is actually something that bonds us together. It's the expression of this life that brings us together as such. 
And in that sense, the moment I start depriving you of your dignity, I'm actually depriving me of the fullness of life that comes when freely I come to your presence and welcome the unfolding mystery of life. In no way I can predict your response. I can try to read this audience and see the nodding people and the smiling one and the one a little tired after lunch and the not. Uh... But there is something about the freedom of your own responding to somebody else's presence that is exactly what we are supposed to be to one another. This call to life, this call to fullness that comes when we accept that in many ways our life is unfulfilled without the others. And that life is in these fulfilling Indian countries with others that are present to us for a very tiny little moment. And under very curiously, once again, fragile condition. Se io cominciassi a parlare italiano, la nostra conversazione sarebbe molto diversa. If I were to speak Italian, our conversation would be very different. <laughs> to be present to one another, we need really fine tuning. And language is so essential to it. I can speak as an Italian that is trying to speak English. And this mystery of being present to one another is so important in understanding that this fullness comes to us through the recognition of each other's dignity. When we intentionally kill, hurt, hit others, we kill, hurt, and hit ourselves. Even if the illusion of powerfulness obfuscates our perception, when we avoid recognizing the dignity of others, we are depriving ourselves of our full humanity. We are closing our eyes, we are closing our life, we are closing our heart to the mystery of the others in front of me. We are deciding for both. I am the one saying, you must die, you must suffer, you must be put in jail. You must bear the burden of this race. You must be the one that suffers for both of us. But in reality, my powerfulness is just an illusion. I cannot take away something that I didn't give. I can pretend, I can impose, I can mock. But the dignity is there, regardless of my incapacity to recognize it. So what I want to stress is that there is a dynamism to dignity in the way we're experiencing with one another. Can we take dignity away? It is actually, in my opinion, easier to take life than dignity. As I mentioned before, I can kill you very easily. You can kill me very easily. But what happened when I tried to take your dignity away? That others are watching. And the way in which my attempt to take your dignity away from you, it is narrated, is actually very strongly able to bring back that dignity to the person that was killed, hurt, tortured, and violated. If there is a large shift in human history in recent times, is a shift towards the victim imperative. Powerful do not seem to be that powerful anymore. Victims speak better, strongly, these days than ever before. We can pay attention to the suffering of others because of our human rights references because of our collective awareness, in a way that was not possible to generations prior to us. Let's welcome this awareness. Let's welcome the words that gave us the idea 
that victims, can, victims' dignity cannot be taken away, even when they are dead, even when they are tortured, even when their body is massacred. I do not know if you ever heard of Ted Sanba, a Cambodian journalist that had his family killed in the genocide. His story is beautifully portrayed in a documentary called The Enemies of the People. But what Ted did was to befriend the perpetrator. Because in Cambodia, nobody knows actually who did it. Who killed the thousands, the hundred thousands, the millions of people? So he went one by one looking for them to the perpetrator. And then what did he do? He befriended them. For years, he was present to them in friendship. After years and years and years, the perpetrators opened up. And they told the stories of what they were doing, and why they were doing, and how they were doing, and what they were thinking of themselves in doing, slaughtering people like they were Goats, thinking of themselves not human anymore. And that was with them, welcoming the word that could not be said if the friendship was not there. What a beautiful invitation to all of us to recognize that the creativity of the human spirit is actually responsible not just for the actions that you do, that's obvious enough, but that's American individualism. That's OK. But what that is saying, I am also responsible for the perpetrators that did something horrible and have no one to talk to. And because they have no one to talk to, they are lost in themselves and in the story. And here I am, befriending them so that the truth of what they did could come out and liberate both them and me, the victim and the perpetrator. A beautiful transformation, way beyond tribunals, way beyond the accusation, way beyond retribution. A testament that the human spirit is capable, even in the midst of terrible suffering, to remain creative to remain generative, to remain capable of restoring the dignity that was taken away by the violence, by the violent, one after the other. It is indeed in the prophecy of friendship that dignity is restored. It is indeed in the prophecy of friendship that we can call each other, not just to defend the dignity that was already, but to imagine the dignity that must come for everyone, and to be relentless in our seeking that this dignity is truly recognized for everyone, everywhere, all the time. That the universality is experienced by everyone, regardless of the differences, regardless of the human conditions, regardless of what they are experiencing. When we meet someone, we have to decide if she or he is going to be recognized as someone fully human, in their dignity, invited to freely choose to be human together. Indeed, may this dialogue be an invitation for all of us to be as creative as that in finding ways in which the dignity that is in us becomes the venue, the link, the bridge that bring us together in each other's presence, discovering, seeking, searching these unfolding mysteries that is life. Thank you.